Coming up on Ag Week TV, a new project could help cover crops boost the bottom line. While many precision agriculture technologies focus on improving yield and improving the bottom line, some focus on improving the land. We check in with many corn and soybean topics at the Minnesota Ag Expo in Mankato. I'm Michelle Rook here at one of the region's best livestock shows and sales, the Sioux Empire Farm Show in Sioux Falls. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. When you think of precision ag, you might think of auto steer, variable rate seeding, satellites, or drones. But as Jenny Schlecht found at a precision ag workshop, some experts would like you to add conservation to that mix. Precision agriculture isn't just about improving the bottom line. There are some uses of new technologies that can actually help improve the land. And to me, hunting, farming, conservation, taking care of the land all go together, in part because I really want to help uh, make sure that the fifth generation, my kids, have the chance to enjoy farming traditions and hunting traditions just like I do. Ryan Heinegger is the director of Ag Conservation Innovations for Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever. In this tight ag economy, Every acre needs to be as profitable as possible. And Heinegger says to be profitable, farmers need to be sustainable. Melissa Schockman, precision ag and conservation specialist with Pheasants Forever, says precision ag tools like Profit Zone Manager can boost both profits and sustainability. When they're able to actually look at kind of what the profitability at the acre level is, it's actually people get quite surprised by how well they're doing on those acres. The data can also help farmers determine whether there's a better use for some acres or how they can improve soil health. The big thing with cover crops is when we improve soil health, it doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take a number of years and continuous management in order to reap the benefits of it. All the experts say soil and wildlife are both precious resources that need to be protected with every tool available. In Jamestown, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Pheasants Forever will be putting on a precision ag workshop in Sioux Falls on February 16th. For more information, go to pheasantsforever.org. Cover crops are becoming more popular across the Midwest. They're raised primarily to improve soil health, not for harvest and sale. There's a project in North Dakota that hopes to gather more data on using cover crops to boost the bottom line. As you go farther north, growing cover crops becomes more difficult. An innovative project seeks to change that. It's called How Far North Can We Grow? 49th Parallel Cover Crop Project. Paul Overby, a farmer and businessman, organized and directs the effort to help Northeast North Dakota farmers. So the Cover Crop Project is trying to work with farmers in Northeastern North Dakota, where we have a cooler and wetter climate, on how we can add cover crops into our rotation in a way that benefits both the soil health and hopefully the economics for the farmers as well. 32 farmers are involved. Matt Nelson is one of them. We're finding out which crops do good after harvest in our areas or uh, different methods to uh, to plant the cover crops. Uh, we've tried aerial, we've tried putting them in with a vertical tillage tool and with the drill. Overby says planting cover crops in the area can be challenging. We're going to tend to be trying to seed cover crops in mid to late August and early September. And that's always been a challenge to get them in the ground while you're still harvesting because usually we're not done harvesting at that point. So we've got combining going on and planting cover crops and that's always a challenge to get all of that done. Overby says cover crops will help to build soil fertility. One of the things that I think that we're going to be able to see coming out of this project is the ability of using cover crops to capture nitrogen in the fall, store it in the organic matter, and then make that available to the crop the following spring. And that'll prevent some of the nitrogen from leaching out if we have heavy spring rains. The project seeks optimal species mixes, seeding rates, and seeding methods. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knutson. The 49th Parallel Cover Crop Project is a four-year project. It ends in September of 2019. John has more on this story in the next Ag Week magazine. 
Farmers want to protect crop insurance, but should also focus on protecting a larger portfolio of revenues. That was the message from Brad Lubin, an extension service policy specialist from the University of Nebraska. Lubin spoke at an annual crop insurance conference in Fargo. Farmers have been asking Congress to do no harm to the crop insurance component of the Farm Bill, which is set to expire in September. Many see crop insurance as a key part of the federal government's farm safety net. Lubin says farmers are also worried about changes in other revenue support programs. The primary commodity titles in the 2014 Farm Bill included the ARC and PLC programs. Lubin says that with declining commodity prices, there may be a shift from ARC toward PLC. The fundamental difference being when we enrolled in the ARC program, we had higher expectations for prices. We had a higher guarantee in that, in that moving average uh, guarantee under ARC, and that provided a lot of protection. Now that moving average guarantee is caught up with lower prices, and there's not much more production left in ARC as compared to uh, a shift to PLC. The event and training was hosted by NDSU. This year it drew about 230 crop insurance company officials who use it to stay certified for work. Demand for canola continues to grow. Scott Anderson is a seed sales specialist with Cebus, a company based in San Diego. They specialize in canola and their technology company and a trait provider and decided to market their own seed. He says there's a lot of demand for the non-GMO canola. The dairy industry is starting to use canola meal for their products and so is the pet food industry and they prefer non-GMO products and they're not that easy to find. Anderson says canola has become a very popular crop in southwest North Dakota. He says it can be grown in any county in North Dakota. Up next on Ag Week TV, livestock producers are showing off the best of the best at the Sioux Empire Farm Show. Make every minute of the growing season count. Schedule your equipment for a genuine Case IH parts and service uptime inspection at Titan Machinery. Our professional service technicians have the training and experience to pinpoint and repair problems before they have a chance to shut you down during the season. Avoid the high cost of in-season downtime. Give yourself the peace of mind knowing your equipment is ready to work. Schedule your equipment today by going to uptime18.com or calling your local Titan Machinery dealer. That's Titan Machinery, providing you with genuine Case IH parts and service. Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo. This one day only event features speaker Jay Lair and is hosted by Market to Market's Mike Pearson. With a large corn and soybean trade show and breakout education and networking sessions, you can't miss the first annual Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a, a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms. And as a result, uh, more people can eat. Superior Grain Equipment offers storage and drying solutions designed for your grain handling needs. Mixed flow grain dryers from Superior offer even heating to reduce heat stress cracking so you get higher quality grain, higher test weights, and better prices. Plus, they use half the energy of conventional screen dryers. Experience cost savings and superior grain conditioning. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Bees are vital to agriculture, but bee populations have faced serious problems in recent years. Both pesticides and pests are being blamed for the loss of bees as researchers look for answers. At the Minnesota Ag Expo in Mankato, Mikkel Pates found farmers and beekeepers working together for solutions. 
One of the topics is how farmers can coexist with honeybees and other pollinators. The University of Minnesota has received $1.7 million in grants for a pollinator habitat research project. The goal is to work with farmers to put bee habitat on farmland. We're going to have the different treatments of different amounts of corn and soybean in the surrounding area around the habitat, and we'll quantify the benefit of these flowers to honeybee colonies and to our native bees, and to see how many beneficial insects it brings in. Dan Whitney, the president of the Minnesota Honey Producers, said that there are only about 1,500 commercial honey producers in the U.S., so they don't always get the attention they need. He says while they face several problems, mites are the biggest one right now. We could use a little help maybe in developing some new miticides in such a small industry. We need better tools. While mites, fungus, and pesticides are a big problem for bee health, the solution could be keeping them well fed. They all combine in a, this kind of perfect storm to really degrade bee health. And the way out of this is to provide bees with really good nutrition, and that's flowers. Dr. Spivak says the flowers not only help bees detoxify, they help bolster their immune systems. In Mankato, this is Micklepates for Ag Week. They have money for seeds and planting and are looking for farmer collaborators in southwest Minnesota to plant the habitat. Since 1954, the Sioux Empire Farm Show has been one of the best in the upper Midwest. It includes top market and purebred livestock shows and sales and the latest in commercial livestock exhibits. Michelle Rook looked into the economic impact the show and the industry have on the region. The livestock industry is the backbone of South Dakota's economy, and that was evident here at this year's Sioux Empire Farm Show in Sioux Falls. Numbers were strong for the livestock shows and sales, including six breeds of beef cattle, market hogs, sheep, and goats. Consignments are up, sales have been real steady, um, the market livestock's been really good. Plus, the caliber of livestock at the shows and sales reflects the strength of the livestock industry in the state and region. There's Denver division champions selling right here at the farm show, so the quality is really good. I mean, the cattle are, these cattle could go on and compete anywhere. Quality is really good, especially after Denver, then you get all the Denver sh sheep that come back and it's a nice show to come to afterwards and see a lot of great livestock. The Supreme Row and Mayor's Roundup and Sale of Champions is also a big attraction. And that $12,000 purse gets divided for our Supreme overall bull and Supreme overall female. Um, the consigner and the buyer both get a portion of that purse. And even though the show is held in the largest city in South Dakota, businesses and residents understand the economic impact the agricultural industry makes. It's just a big circle and, and all of those commodities um, are important for everyday life. If you're wearing clothes today or you're eating a meal, agriculture is important to you. In Sioux Falls, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. Exhibitors came from several states, including Pennsylvania, Texas, Wyoming, and Iowa. After nine seasons of growing and selling local produce, Riverbound Farm is calling it quits. Brian and Angela McGinnis started Riverbound Farm south of Mandan in 2009 as a community-supported agriculture venture. They got the idea while living in Vermont where most of the food is locally produced and sold. But their business suffered when oil and commodity prices dropped and fewer people are buying into CSAs nationwide. At the same time, plans to supply produce for the new Bizman Food Co-op didn't fully pan out. It takes a lot of work from people who want to buy local as well as people who want to grow local. We have to work hard at maintaining that professional level. Brian McGinnis is helping to develop a sustainable ag program at United Tribes Technical College in Bismarck, and Angela is working on a nursing degree. They plan to turn Riverbound Farm into a large community garden this summer. Your agri-weather outlook for February is up next. And later, we'll see how Butler Machinery is making tracks with its newest tractor. American Farm Equipment offers you the most effective, reliable, and simple to run grain dryers. Deluxe grain dryers with Moisture Link Plus G2 control panels give you the most accurate moisture and temperature readings, making it easy for you. You can monitor remotely with your cell phone, iPad, or computer. Guy Kittleson with American Farm Equipment installs deluxe grain dryers, and if needed, Guy can access your grain dryer remotely, saving you time and money. Call Guy Kittleson at American Farm Equipment today. 
30. I'm 120, I'm 30, I'm 30. I'm 55. Once around the block, 212, my right here, and I have them times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment, or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Dream of building a new home? garage, shop, barn, or commercial space? What if you could create your ideal building for less than you ever imagined? Want to build a cabin in the woods, a workshop, storage space? Then call your Hanson personal building designer now and we'll include professionally engineered sealed plans to your new building absolutely free. Save up to thousands of dollars. Build your ideal dream for less than you ever imagined. Call now. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. The month of February begins much like the way the month of January began, and that is we're basically in the northern plains cold and dry. We've had a few excursions of warmer weather. Uh, in fact, the month of January mostly was above average by a little bit because the warm days offset the cold. But we started off the month cold, and we're starting off the month of February with some cold weather and some mostly dry weather. Yeah, there'll be some little snows here and there, but not containing a whole lot of moisture. The interesting thing that is happening right now, and it's significant in terms of Plains weather, is that the southern part of the United States is starting to get pretty dry. Let me take you back to the fall. We had severe drought ongoing in Montana, and western parts of North Dakota is pretty dry over much of the northern plains but especially the west and as we went through the fall season things improved slightly eastern Dakota's Iowa remain quite dry back in Montana. Now over the course of the winter time things don't change very much in the northern plains because the ground is frozen. Doesn't matter how much snow falls because none of it has a chance to soak in. That's not the situation down south and sure enough down in the southern plains it has been gradually getting drier, especially through December and January. And the drought is starting to look in the Texas panhandle the way it was in western North Dakota last year. So we have a pretty good drought going on down in the southern plains. It'll be interesting to see if that pans out. My suspicion is it will stay down there, dry down there for at least a while. Weather pattern for the time being, ridge of high pressure along the Pacific, trough of low pressure around a deep low near Hudson Bay, which means it's going to be fairly cold this week across the northern plains, Great Lakes region, and it will continue to be, continue to be quite warm out along the western part of the country. In fact, some of this just downright hot down in the southwest. There will be some days not quite as cold as other, but the general trend here is cold. Some moderation by the time we get to a, a, a look at the weekend. That won't last very long as the jet slips back to the west a little bit. Then comes east by sometime around or a little after Valentine's Day. We may actually get a bit of a northern plains warm up. Precipitation, it's going to be scant. A little quick shower systems passing through. Maybe a few scattered light flurries here and there this week. But I, and maybe an inch or two or three in some spots. Uh, but I don't expect a lot of widespread heavy snow into the northern plains at all. That's just not looking very likely at all, although there may be enough little systems that will at least get the ground primarily covered up once again over the Plains region. And as we move ahead to the second week of the forecast, which takes us through about Valentine's Day, it's not looking like it's really going to be significantly wetter, though there will be a few chances of little snow, mostly cold. And keep an eye on the southern plains, that winter wheat part of the country. Oklahoma, the Texas panhandle area, it's looking like it's going to stay dry for the foreseeable future.
Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Micro Essentials is a unique product in the sense where it's a homogenized product that has four nutrients in every single granule. What makes it different than other products that are out in the country? So it has four different nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, which is two forms of sulfur, and zinc in every granule. We're seeing multiple things. We have sulfate sulfur and elemental sulfur. The sulfate sulfur, we get the bulk of the use of it the first year. The elemental breaks down over time. I've had farmers come up to me and tell me that they not only see the benefit the first year in higher yield or higher quality, but they're seeing it in consecutive years. So it's a huge benefit for the grower to use it on a consecutive basis. Our overall goal is to increase our farmers' yields and help them produce a higher quality and higher yielding crop. It's giving them the opportunity to get more nutrients in one. It makes sense agronomically, it makes sense economically. Get ready for the first annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 13th, only at the Fargo Dome. Welcome back to AgWeek TV. We are here at Butler Machinery and joining us now is Mark Madsen. Mark, we're here to talk about your new MT700 series. First of all, give us some background on this tractor. It is a new tractor for us in uh, 2018. We've uh, been looking forward to this product for a long time. It's been uh, a long wait for having a CVT in our tra tractors for row crop applications, especially in the valley here. Tracks are a big deal, right? We want low compaction and we want that feature when we go to the field. So having that CVT coupled up to the track system we have here and, and, and the other benefits we've had now with some upgrades, uh, it's really going to be an exciting thing for us. Tell us about the new features inside the cab. It's really an all new cab design. Uh, all the differences in the cab are really going to be noticeable on the armrest, right? All the controls are more common to the 1000 series, which is the all the new platform. The monitor that's in there is going to be a major change, and, and the hand controls for hydraulics, uh, machine controls in general are going to be different. When you sit down in the cab, you'll notice a difference if you've ever been around a previous model. And it sounds like a smooth ride, too. Yeah, one of the bigger things that changed from the old Series E models or even Cs and Bs now to the, the 700 CVT version is the uh, Maxi Ride suspension system. So we've gone away from uh, the uh, mushroom springs down to a coil spring system, which improves the ride a lot, uh, not necessarily just in the field, but also on the highway too. What sets this tractor apart from others on the market? It goes back to this whole concept of low RPM, high torque. And we get highest torque performance out of these machines uh, with the 1000 Series and also now with the 700 CVT with roughly 1450, 1500 RPM, which traditionally most tractors in the field that are running, if you want maximum power, maximum torque, you're talking RPMs in the 1700 and 1800 range, which higher RPM, you're burning more fuel. Is this on the market now? Yeah, our first machines uh, that we actually retailed were last fall are coming in right now, but we'll have the bulk of our machines uh, coming in later this year. So uh, we're pretty excited about what we can see with this machine in the fall. And they can check it all out at butlermachinery.com? Absolutely. Everything is online and you got our contact information for every store we have in the territory. So uh, feel free to give us a call. Mark Madsen at Butler Machinery. Thanks for uh, letting us check out your MT700 series. Thank you. Still ahead on AgWeek TV, a new restaurant is helping local farmers feed their diners. Advanced biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. 
biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. We're excited to bring you the new AgWeek app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your AgWeek news, weather, and the latest episodes of AgWeek TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take AgWeek with you. Download the new AgWeek app today. TrueFlex Land Rollers. TrueFlex Land Rollers are designed with today's farmer in mind. With a 42-inch roller diameter, features include a heavy-duty hinge and wing lock, true roller overlap, 3-inch replaceable roller shafts, hydraulic wing steer, and more. As manufacturers, we can custom build to any size. For questions, call us toll-free or check us out online. TrueFlex Land Rollers, a division of SprayFlex. Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian storage and grain handling. Fifty years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. A new restaurant in Grand Forks is serving up a menu grown by local farmers. Rachel and Scott Franz opened Eli's Ivy Downtown in late November. They're partnering with area farmers to bring homegrown food to the community. The menu features beer from area brewers as well as meats, cheeses and vegetables from nearby farmers. The owners say they want the menu to showcase the hard work of the community. We believe it's about creating community and partnerships as much as we can and helping those next to us maintain their businesses as we work to promote our own as well. They hope to keep adding more area vendors when the weather warms up. I'm closing the show with a personal note. This is my last show with Ag Week TV as I'm stepping down to pursue a new opportunity. It's been a great three years since our first show aired on January 11th, 2015. I've enjoyed meeting farmers, ranchers, and agribusiness leaders from around the region and telling your stories while watching the growth and evolution of Ag Week TV. Thank you to our loyal viewers and to the strong team I've had the opportunity to work with. Ag Week TV will continue to bring you the same quality ag news and features, so keep tuning in every week and stay connected at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well.